me angle today, you don't know. So I was on Instagram earlier, scrolling through my feed, come across a video. A man was talking about how he feels sorry for homeless people. Because you have to check it, it's November right now, December, January, February, it can't get cold, even in the UK. Boom. So I've gone to the comment section of this video, scrolling through, scrolling through, scrolling through. Everyone's singing off the same hymn sheet. Oh, we feel sorry for the people, them. Oh, it's rough out there. Prayers to the people, them. A man like me, man don't feel sorry for these homeless people. 95% of them. The 5%, yeah, I feel sorry for them. You know why? Because a gal might be out on the street to escape her abusive boyfriend or... Her stepfather's abusing her. Or a man might have a mental illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man feel sorry for them people there that are out on the streets. But the 95%, man don't feel sorry for them. You know why? Because they're out on the streets because of their poor life decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the people there who's out on the street, them man they are drug addicts, alcoholics. Or a man might be a gambler and lost everything. Don't feel sorry for these people, you know. The people them that are out on the street who are homeless, they need to take accountability for their actions. Their decisions put them there out on the street. So anyway, I left a comment under this video basically saying what I just said in the air. Like, man, don't feel sorry for these people. Their actions put them there on the street and they take out and believe for their actions and that. Yeah. So obviously the person who made the video, they've uh, responded to my comment and that. And, yeah. and they're saying, yeah, you shouldn't judge or whatever in it because a man might be out on the street homeless because he split up with his gal. <laughs> That's the wrong thing to say to a man like me. Obviously the man don't know a man like that. What would I say to something like that? What would I, how would I respond? How would Jay Wise respond to a man saying, oh, he might be homeless because he split up with his missus or whatever? Take a guess. You know what man said? Blood, man them need to get their things together and get their own place and have a gal moving with them. So that when it comes time to do the kicking out, you go and stay and the girl have to get ghost. Then obviously a man's response to that was, well, if there's children involved or whatever, in it, yeah. All these kind of excuses and that. Blood, man, them tell you right now, yeah, don't move with no fucking girl. I'm not the only person who said this now. I've actually had someone verify what I'm talking about in regards to moving in with a girl. If you break up with, if you move in with a gal, yeah, if you move in with a gal, you move into a girl's yard. Once you break up, if you're lucky, you go to your mother's yard. If you're not so lucky, you go to your auntie's. If you're on an idiot thing, you sleep, you, you stay with your sister. And worst of all, you might go to the Salvation Army if not out on the street. Man, them need to stop moving in with gal. Get your things together, get your own place, and have a gal come moving with you. Because if not, you'll be out on a fucking park bench. Remember I said it a long time ago, chatting to my mum and my auntie Joan, big up auntie Joan, innit? And they laughed when I said this, because mum was like a lot younger than it, like 16 or something, innit? I said, yeah. I'm gonna get my own place and have a girl moving with me so that when it comes time to do the kicking out, I will have somewhere to stay. And they laughed, you know. Man's actually proved it now, you know. Man's got my own place. Ain't nobody coming here to evict me, blood. If I break up with my girl and we no longer talk, you see this room over here, yeah? You see over there? I remain there, yeah? There ain't no Brexit, yeah? 
Man, 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 man can reside up there. There's no, oh, I need to go to my mother's yard or my sister's yard or the Salvation Army or a park bench. No, 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 none of that bullshit. The only thing that's happened to me, I won't be speaking to her. That's it. For some man, it's one of those four options. Maybe five, maybe six. Or, if they ain't man enough to leave, then they get emasculated and get bitched up by their gal. Man, them stop moving into girls' yards. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. But yeah, a man like me, I don't feel no remorse for 95% of these um, homeless people and that. It's their life decisions put them in that position. And if you truly, really do feel sorry for these people and just feel like, oh, well, you know, life just happened and that. You're the type of person, let me say something, to truly be successful in this life. You have to take accountability, not just for your own actions. You can't just think to yourself, oh, well, I'm just accountable for my life or whatever. Isn't it? You have to, your outlook on life as a whole, you need to think to yourself, everybody needs to take accountability for their actions. And stop relying on other people to solve their problems. Or thinking that our oh, life is just going to work itself out. Life don't just work itself out. People ain't going to solve your problems. People can help you on the way, but you have to help yourself. This is why black people are in the position that they're in. Because they feel like a higher power, i.e. the government, has locked them into the system. The system's rigged against them. It's not rigged against them. It's not rigged against me. A man knows. A man knows what it's really like to be on that side of the law. People who believe in God. Oh, God willing's going to do this. Oh, God will fix my problem. God ain't going to fix your problems. I don't believe in God. But let's say there is a God. Do you know when God will fix your problems? When you start getting on a path to fixing your problems yourself, then God's going to give you that helping hand. Ain't nobody going to help you unless you help yourself. Even in my book, man wrote the chapter about my sister, how I found my sister. When I came out of jail, and I don't want to spoil it, just in case, you know, someone ain't read it yet or they plan to buy the book. But anyway, came out of jail and I was making a mad effort, mad effort to try and find my sister. And a family member said, you know what? They're going to do something that could risk their job to get me my sister's details. And they did it. You know why they did it? Because they could see the effort that man was putting in to finding my sister. Not just do something called idiot searches. Oh, I can't find Jane Smith. Fuck the search. No, man was buying his birth certificates. Man bought my sister's birth certificate, you know. Went to different addresses on two different days, different parts of London, you know. And the family member knew about it. So they decided to risk their job to help me. If I was doing some look at idiot Facebook searches, oh, I ain't got no results or whatever. You think they would have risked their job? No, they saw me going out of my way. North London. Two addresses in North London. One address in East London. Turning up randomly. On two different occasions as well. When I didn't get a response, man's going back. Per person in my family decided to help me because I was helping myself. Man was showing willingness. Anyway, man don't want to go too off on a tangent and that. But man don't feel sorry for 95% of these homeless people. Their life decisions and actions and that put them out there on the street. If you're a fucking man, why are you in a position for a gal to make you homeless, blood? The only female's roof you should be living under is your Ras Clark mother's roof. Man don't even believe in 50-50 mortgages as well, you know. Nah, nah, nah. Man don't believe in no 50-50 mortgage, fam. Because what's going to happen is a woman's still going to use that to her advantage. There's certain men, they don't know how to control themselves, whether they might act out in a certain way. They might not even hit the woman or nothing like that. 
but they might just act out in a certain way. They might smash or break something. All it takes is one phone call, triple nine. Oh, he hasn't hit me yet. He hasn't hit me yet, but he smashed this and smashed that. So I don't want him in this house. You know how the government is, you know how the law is. They want a woman's side. So you're not staying in this bed tonight. Yeah, you're going somewhere else. That's what the boy then, that's what the police then are going to say to you. So then, you're going back to your mother's yard. Maybe your auntie's yard. Maybe your sister's yard or the Salvation Army or a park bench. One of them. I remember when I was younger, like back in my rebel days, 17, 18. You know that like when you're just being too much of a rebel, in it, and your mum says, come out of the yard, come out of the yard, innit? But basically, my, my mum basically kicked man out, innit? And, um, yeah, but I basically spent the night on a park bench. What I had to do was, luckily I had a key, innit? For my yard, obviously, innit? I had to sneak, almost not, I, I didn't break in, man didn't break nothing, but yeah, basically, man had to creep around and sneak in through the back door, creep around in the yard, like the cat burglar, to get back into my bed. This was at like four in the morning where it was just too cold to be outside. And what I did was, my bed was near my window, but there was like a, a gap between the window and the bed frame like that. So what I did was, I slept on the floor, in between the bed and the window frame. And I heard my mum come in my room at like seven in the morning or whatever to check to see if I was in the house. And I weren't. She bust the door open, looked, and then she went about her business. She couldn't see me, but I heard her come in the room or whatever, innit? Because I didn't want her to say, oh, come out of the yard again. Imagine if you're with a, imagine you're in a relationship with a gal and you're living under her roof. She's got the power to kick you out, like. You get into any little argument. And if you know anything about attraction with women and that, you've got to call a woman's bluff, you know. A woman might not even be serious, you know, but she might say to you, get out of my fucking house during an argument. If you don't like it, get out. You better call that bluff. You better get out. If you do not get out, you're going to like a dickhead. You're gonna look like a dickhead. Man, no, man. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, all of this business about man moving in with gal and that. Like, man, no, man. Oh, uh, like, certain man could brag about, oh, man, live in this house, three bed house, whatever, whatever, whatever in it. Yeah, my house is so nice and that. But, blood, you're on a 50 50 relationship, 50 50 partnership um, on this property with a gal. I've been there. I've been to a man's yard doing work in a man's yard. Him and his girl, 50-50. But it's not really 50-50. It's more 90% to her, 10% to you in terms of the power dynamics in the yard. Yeah, the mortgage might be 50-50, but the power dynamics is 90%, 10%. I've seen a man, me and a man, I'm in a man's yard and we're a bit, well, he's in the bit indecisive about what color light bulbs to buy, warm white, cool white. I've gone there to do electrical work. And he couldn't make that decision on his own. So you know what he had to do? He had to sit there for 20 minutes and wait for his girl to finish her work call, even though it was a, a business call and it was important, he had to sit there and wait for this girl 20 minutes to finish her business call before he can ask her, should I get cool white or warm white? Because God forbid, the man made the wrong decision. All hell would have broke loose. This, this, this is the kind of shit that happens when you're living with a gal under her roof or whatever. Because certain men think they're in a 50-50 partnership with a gal. No, you're not in a 50-50 partnership. You're a sleeping partner. She's just using you for the deposit. She's using you for the extra money. She needs the extra cash. If she can have it her way, she'll own 100% of the yard. You'll live under her roof so she can maintain power in the relationship. Man's been there with man. Remember when I was an apprentice? Man said this story a couple of times. 
my mentor that I was working with, they bought another property around the corner from their, their house where they live, where they reside, innit? And they're doing it up, painting little light cosmetic work, whatever it boom. They need to get some brand new doors, internal doors for the house, innit? You know, like a room door, yeah? Boom. So we've gone to B&Q after work. Let's say it's a Wednesday or a Thursday afternoon. The man's phoned his girl, innit? Right, babe. Oh, um, what style of doors did you want? Because I'm in B&Q now. Did you want the curved edge or the straight edge? What are you doing in B&Q? I told you we're going to go there on Saturday. And the man's had to say, oh, sorry, and put his head down. And we just walked out of the shop. How can, how can you be in a relationship with a gal who is... T no, no, man, man for have the power in it. Man for, but this is what happens when you're in a 50-50 partnership with a gal. Because in that 50-50 partnership with a gal, what she will do to maintain the power in that is just withhold sex. Withhold sex. She use sex as a weapon. She use sex as a weapon. But boy, if you don't do what I say, you don't get none of this. What are you saying? What are you saying? Dickhead neighbours next door. Some look all business outside. I can't get into too much details with that. But anyway. Um, he's trying to chat to the girl. You know how women are. They want to say their piece. And then when it's time for you to say your piece, they want to just, oh, I don't want to hear it. So anyway, the girl's gone in the yard. The boyfriend's still outside, man, chatting to the boyfriend or whatever, isn't it? We're talking now. And she's come outside. She's like, C come in the house, whatever, isn't it? And he's like, no. She tried to pull him in, like drag him in to the point where he's leaned back or whatever, isn't it? He's like, get off me. She's like, get in the house now. You can fucking stay out tonight. This is what happens when you move into a girl's yard, you know? Eventually she will break your blood club. But man's digressed too much. I know I keep saying I keep digressing and that. And, but yeah, the point of the video is about being homeless and stuff like that. And it's to do with um, uh, moving in a girl's yard or whatever. Isn't it? But the homeless thing, we just touch back on the homeless thing. Man, don't feel sorry for them people. Only 5%. Because again, as I said, a girl might be abused by her stepdad or something like that. Or a man might have a mental illness or whatever. Isn't it? So that's why he's out on the on the street and even then there's help for these people but you know what let's just give them a pass and say they don't know how to find help or whatever in it so yeah that five percent of people who are vulnerable yeah fine yeah man feel sorry for them people but the rest of them the people that are just out on the street begging alcoholics dry like this no 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 man don't feel sorry for them don't get it twisted man's bought a man kfc here and there or whatever in it man don't look down on these people or nothing like that man won't like you know you really try to not help them or nothing like that now and then. Like, a man's done it in the past. I ain't done it for a while. Because one thing I'll never do, never give them money. Never give them money. Always buy them something. If you feel sorry for them and you want to give a man a little something, don't give them money. Because they'll probably end up wasting it. So, yeah, 5% of the people that are out on the street, yeah, man will feel sorry for them because they're vulnerable. But the other 95% of them don't feel sorry for them. Their poor decisions in life have put them out there. And if you can't realise that you're the type of person, you don't understand what it means to take accountability, not just in your own life, in life in general. When I see someone not doing well for themselves throughout their whole life for a good 10 years, I know it's them. I know it's not, oh, where they're from, what area, what colour skin they are. Because look how man, man don't have to even say this again. Look at where man's come from. Look what man's got. So if I can, you can. And obviously back to the moving in with a girl thing. If you're moving with a girl, you're a fucking dickhead. Don't move in a girl's yard, blood. Don't live under a girl's roof. The only woman's roof you should live under is your mother's yard. That's it. Get your own things together and make the girl come moving with you. <laughs> a man, a man try to say this whole had a little not an argument but a little back and forth whatever innit um, and the guy was just like basically yeah but when because I was saying that you know you shouldn't move into a girl's yard because um, obviously if anyone gets kicked out it's going to be you but then the guys come back and say yeah but when you have kids involved it's a little bit more difficult or whatever innit well 
If you have your own yard, then boy, the kids can stay with me or they can go with you. And the thing is, no, the government don't allow children to live and be homeless and shit. So a girl will get a yard. So you don't have to worry about your kids sleeping on a fucking park bench or whatever, innit? Yeah, man, it's an idiot thing. Don't move in with no girl. Mm -mm. Get your own things. Yeah. Everyone won. Oh yeah, man's a king. Man's top top tier man. Top dog and that. Why are you really a top tier man? Why are you really a top dog? If you're relying on a woman, cause you have to check it. A lot of these men have got all these properties and that are in good positions and that. If they didn't have a gal, they would not be in that position. Trust me, man. No. Man, no. Anyway, the video's gone on for too long. Twenty minutes and forty six seconds. Tunnel, stairwell, tunnel.